Emmanuel Macron argues Europe must not separate from China economically as he begins a visit to Beijing. The French president also says Chinese leaders could play a peacemaking role in Ukraine but warns them about arming Russia. And for more on this story, Philippe Lecour joins us live from Paris. He's a senior fellow at the Center for China and Analysis at the Asia Society Policy Institute. Oh, Mr. Lecour, Mr. Macron, uh, and I quote you here, indulging in his uh, favorite but risky role as mediator, as China, very eager to re-engage diplomatically. Between these two, let's leave, a line, leave aside Ms. von der Leyen for the moment, is there not space between Mr. Macron and Mr. Xi for some kind of positive, concrete agreement? Well, I think, you know, obviously this is a, a you know, the first trip that he's making as president since uh, 2019. Uh, a lot of things have changed. Um, am among them, uh, you know, the uh, sort of poor re diplomatic relations between uh, the West and China, and of course the war in Ukraine. Uh, I think what's important for the Chinese leaders to understand is that on a daily basis, Europeans uh, are watching this war unfolding in Ukraine. Um, so it's not business as usual. Um, and, and I think from, from the French president point of view, he has to come back with some kind of, uh, I wouldn't say promise, but at least commitment, uh, uh, one step further from, from the sort of neutrality that China has been, uh, talking about, which has not, which is not considered as neutrality in most circles. So Ms. von der Leyen's speech last week when she made it very clear that China and Russia, their relations would be a determining factor in how the EU relates to China in the future, that is not understating the point at all. Yes, well, you're referring to her policy speech on China uh, just a few days ago, ahead of her, her trip, and she'll be joining President Macron uh, in fact, tomorrow in Beijing, and they're having their own program afterwards. Uh, but the, the fact they are coming together is very important. Uh, first of all, because it's an EU position on China. China is now seen as a very assertive power, but also, you know, as a great power. Uh, and I think the EU is keen to uh, uh, accept that fact. Um, at the same time, uh, there are a, a number of uh, issues between China and, 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 and Europe. One of them is Ukraine. Uh, another one is the perhaps the uh, market discrepancies between uh, the EU and China. As you know, there are many uh, trade issues and investment issues. And in fact, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen has been calling for uh, more um, uh, defensive tools uh, from an EU point of view against uh, uh, this assertiveness. Um, and she mentioned, um, you know, state subsidies, she mentioned uh, coercion, anti-coercion instruments. Uh, so that's why I was saying, you know, things have changed between China and, and the EU. And, you know, what, I, what I'm struck by is all the comments uh, of this week in, in European media uh, stating the obvious that, that China has become a, a systemic rival to, to Europe. And, you know, um, and the partnership, if there is one, uh, has to be assessed, you know, on a, on a case by case basis. China perhaps realising that, of course, ahead of this, uh, the Chinese ambassador to the EU, so that's Mr Fu Tong, uh, suggested publicly and privately that one way forward would be if China was prepared to unilaterally lift sanctions on European parliamentarians and then the EU could then go ahead and ratify this big stalled investment treaty, the CAI, and then perhaps there would be some positive outcome from this visit of Mr. Von der Leyen, uh, Ms. Ms. Von der Leyen and Mr. Macron. Is that likely? Yes, I don't think uh, things will be sorted during this week, I'm afraid. Uh, one reason is because uh, among the the, the 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 personalities that have been sanctioned uh, by China um, are a number of members of the European Parliament, and they are not represented during this visit. And they are the ones uh, who are asked to ratify the Comprehensive uh, Agreement on Investment. Um, so you know it's possible that uh, they will discuss this issue. 
how to get back to the negotiating table. But what I'm worried about is, uh, um, you know, some of the reasons why uh, the deal is now frozen have not really changed. Uh, for example, China's commitments to, um, you know, ratify uh, the, the Convention on, on Forced Labor, uh, the repression against the Uyghur minority in Xinjiang, all these kind of things are still happening. And I don't think the European Parliament will really be in a position to, to, to ratify the existing documents. So I think, you know, both Germany and France, the two heavyweights of the EU, are probably willing to go ahead with a more sort of straightforward relationship with China. But it's, it's difficult because there are so many discrepancies and differences between the two sides. Uh, let's hope, you know, they uh, at least engage this time, which is not a foregone conclusion after three and a half years of, of virtual relations, uh, save alone a couple of meetings at multilateral uh, venues. Um, and, and, and this will be followed by more visits and more exchanges, which are utterly necessary. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, Philippe Lecour speaking live to us there from Paris.